Well, I had, you know, even as a, a child, as you know, I've always been fascinated with, like, dark things. And uh, I believe that because uh, of the experiences I had, the traumas I went through as a child, thinking I caused the death of my mother, uh, thinking that I have a, a father out there who hated me because I, I took his wife's life somehow, did something dumb, and on, on and on, and self-punishment and all these cravings for darkness, and, and um, you know, that, that followed me all my, all my life. Even as an adult, I was, uh, as, as a teenager, and then even as an adult, I was fascinated by certain horror movies, Rosemary's Baby, and, and other things, all seemed to, I was always drawn to those things. And it was, um, you know, coming to prison, it was the same thing. I still had my occult literature, and it was just really a lost, lo lost lonely soul. And 10 years into my prison sentences, I'm, I'm struggling, you know, to survive day by day. Along comes this fellow, uh, Ricky, Ricky, and a uh, younger man, and he approaches me one day while I'm walking in the prison yard. And he says, you know, hey, um, your name's Dave, right? And I said, yeah. He says, well, my name's Ricky, and I'd like to introduce myself. I said, yeah, so what's going on? I looked at him suspiciously, because in prison environment, guys that don't know each other usually don't just walk up to one another. It's just a, a way of life in the prison. And he said, uh, listen, I, I, know, I know about your case and everything, but uh, I, I, I I would like to just tell you that Jesus Christ loves you and he's got a plan and purpose for your life. And I said, yeah, I was like skeptical. I said, yeah, okay, I've, I've heard that before. But there's no way God could love me. I've done too many things that are bad, too many things that are evil. There's no way God could forgive me. He says, no, David, you're wrong. God wants to forgive you. And he's, he sent me here to tell you that. And he's got a plan and purpose for your life. Uh, and I'm thinking like, oh, really? And uh, he said, yeah. He said, well, listen, I see you sometimes work out with the weights and sometimes you walk around. I'd like to just be your friend and maybe we can hang out together. You know, I'm new here. And uh, he had been doing time prior, you know, in other prisons, but he was transferred here. So uh, he seemed like a nice guy. And before you knew it, we were hanging out together. And we'd walk the yard together. And he began to tell me as the days went by that he was a Christian, that he gave his life to Jesus while he was locked up in, in another facility. And... Uh, he would share a little of the scriptures with me, a little about, about his life, and we just, you know, palled around, walked around. And, um, and then he gave me a pocket Bible, and he told me, Dave, I know you're Jewish, so maybe you'd like to read the Psalms. It was a Gideon pocket testament, which, which, which had the uh, Psalms in the back. So you had the New Testament and the Psalms. And he says, look, I know you're Jewish, and I think you'd like to read the Psalms. And I, so uh, I started to read them, and I started to read about King David, because I like to read, and I started to read about King David, and I saw all the struggles King David went on with his life, the pain, crying out to God, and I kind of started to relate to that, because uh, I'm going through so much pain and trauma, and, uh, and the story is so, my story is so involved, so complex, you could never tell it in one sitting. It would take days, weeks, months to, to unravel the whole thing. I'm, I'm reading the Psalms sometimes at night before I go to sleep, and I find I start to cry, uh, you know, and, and, my, and I don't know why. But then one day, after I'd known Ricky maybe a month, maybe a little longer, because uh, this was a long time ago now, this was over 25 years ago now, um, I was reading Psalm 34, and I read the scripture, verse 6, where it says, this poor man cried, and heard him and saved him out of all his trouble. And suddenly, once again, it was around midnight, I was alone in my cell with my little reading lamp on, and I read that psalm and I started to cry. And I, I, I just shut off my light because I didn't want any of the other inmates in the gallery to see me crying. And I was getting we're all in individual cells. And I had this tremendous, they got this tremendous urge to get down on my knees and to talk to God. And so I did, in the darkness of my cell, I got down on my knees on the concrete floor, cold concrete floor, and I, like a little kid, I, I put my hands on the, on the bunk, at the, the typical prison bunk bed, and I just began to pour my heart out to the Lord, and I was crying like a baby. But I was talking quietly because I didn't want anyone else to hear me, but I was pouring my heart out to the Lord, and I was telling, uh, saying, God, Jesus, whoever you are, I'm so sorry for everything that happened 
I, I hurt so many people, I hurt my family, and I, I brought so much pain to people, and on and on, I just poured my heart out to him, you know, crying as if I was crying for my mother when she died. And uh, maybe I was on my knees 20 minutes, a half hour, I don't know, and then I got up off my knees, and I felt like a tremendous load had lifted off me. And in, I just got on my bunk, on top of my bunk, and staring at the ceiling for a while, and I drifted off to sleep. Next morning, I woke up and went about my business, going out to breakfast, the doors open, and start the usual day in prison. And um, uh, a couple of days later, I, met, I meet my friend Rick in the, in the yard. And because we live in different cell blocks, so we could only meet when we have yard time, recreation time in the yard. And we'd hang out and talk and maybe lift weights and walk around. And so we were, that day we were sitting on a bench at the end of the yard. And we're just sitting there talking. And I says, hey, Ricky, guess what I did the other day? And he said, what'd you do? I said, well, remember how you've been telling me, you know, to ask Jesus to forgive me of my sins and to come into my heart and things like that? He goes, yeah. I said, well, I did that. And he looked at me, he was like shocked. He goes, you what? And I was, I was surprised by his reaction. So I said, well, you know, you told me that, uh, to, that I should ask Jesus to forgive me of my sins, that I should put my trust in him and, and things like that. And I says, I did. And he says, are you serious? He was so excited. I, I, are you, are you tell on the level? And I said, well, yeah, yeah, what's the big deal? He said, oh, man, he, he jumped up, and he, he jumped off the bench. He started to jump up and down like a kid screaming, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I was so embarrassed. I said, Rich, what are you doing? What are you doing? He says, Dave, don't you understand? You know what this means? I said, what does it mean? He says, you've been born again. You've been born again. I said, I have? He says, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I didn't know what was going on. He was so excited. He said, listen, I know you don't understand it right now, but you, one day you'll understand all these things. He says, you got Jesus in your heart now, and you, you mark my words, your life is never going to be the same. So I says, uh, okay, but you know, he was right. I mean, I couldn't, I started to read the Bible. I couldn't put it down. I started to go to the chapel and the chaplain gave me a whole Bible, new, old and New Testament. It was like a study Bible as a gift, brand new study Bible. And I just couldn't put the Bible down. I would read it every chance I got, whenever I'd come from my work assignment, wherever I had free time and was in my cell, I'd open up my Bible and read. And it really started a whole new life. I met other men in the chapel who you know, you were know, glad to see me and welcome me. And uh, I began to fellowship with other Christians who were fellow inmates like myself and uh, met the chaplain and spoke with him and prayed with him. And um, the rest is history. More than uh, about 27, 28 years have gone by since I was on my knees that one night asking Jesus to forgive me and to come into my life. Not even sure what I was saying, you know, not even sure what would happen and uh, Ricky was right. Well, shortly after that, a few months after that, you know, Ricky and I used to go to the chapel together, but he transferred out. One day I went to the yard and I didn't see him. We were supposed to meet in the yard after our work assignments were done. He wasn't there. So I asked a couple of friends from his cell block, hey, you guys seen Ricky? He said, oh man, Ricky left the day before on a transfer. He's gone. I said, oh man, I couldn't believe it. Because he was almost finished with his time. He was only doing a 10 year sentence and only had a brief period of time left to do. So he went down to a medium security facility to finish up his last year or whatever. And I never saw him again. But his words have always rung true. I look back today, the, t the testimony of what God has done in my life has really gone to so many places throughout the world. I've met friends from all walks of life. Uh, my testimony has gone into many prisons and jails, giving, giving men and women uh, 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 a hope, you know, that, that God forgives sins, that he does redeem people, that even if you're in prison, God will not reject you, that he's come to seek and save those who were lost, and that he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, and God's hands of mercy is stretched wide open. God says, come to me, all you that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. And I realized I went through life without any rest. I had no peace of mind. My life was a story of, again, you know, triumph and tragedy, pain and, and, and everything. And uh, even though I had a lot of adventures in life and a lot of, did a lot of good things, there was still a lot of bad. But I never had that peace. I was a restless soul. I was a lost and lonely soul. And uh, never felt like I really belonged anywhere. Never felt that I had a real family. And, and 
self-destructive behavior patterns and all that stuff that I carried from childhood was always, always self-sabotaging whatever I was doing. But finally, I began to have peace. I began to have joy. My life began to change for the better. And now I look back at all that happened. And oh, I tried my best in this interview with this brief period of time to explain everything. I realize it's just too big of a story and, and probably need to, you know, can't, can't really unravel everything. And the Lord says, David, forget about it. Don't even look back, you know, just keep your hands to the plow, so to speak, and just go forward. He says, I have, I have made all things new in your life. And I'd just like to read a couple of scriptures that are so meaningful to me uh, over the years that have brought me so much encouragement. And one of them is um, in Jeremiah chapter 29, um, uh, which verse, beginning at verse 11. Jeremiah 29, beginning at verse 11, which says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a, a expected end, to give you hope in an expected end. And uh, then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye search for me with all your heart, and I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity. And even though he was talking to the Israelites specifically back then, I believe this promise is for every person that calls upon the name of the Lord, be they Jew or Gentile, whatever nation they come from, because the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so um, God brought me out of captivity. The same promise that he, he promised to the Israelites, he promises to every man and woman throughout the ages of time. Whoever puts their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, not only are they going to be, receive forgiveness of sins, but they're going to start a whole new life. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, He's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And truly the old things, even though I still have memories of them, in God's eyes, those old things have passed away. Another scripture that I love so much that has brought me so much comfort and it's so very special for me, also in the Old Testament, um, is in Micah chapter 7. It's a little, maybe a little known passage to some, but Micah chapter 7 verses 18 to 20, it's one of the most beautiful scriptures that uh, someone like me could ever, ever read. And it says as follows, Who is a God like unto thee that pardons iniquity and passes by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He, that's the Lord, retains not his anger forever because he delights in mercy. He will turn again, he will have compassion on us, he will subdue our iniquities and will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. And thou will perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn to our fathers from days of old. And basically what that's saying is God is saying to, saying to me, he's saying to you, he's saying to everybody that, 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 that puts their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, you, 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 I delight in showing mercy so all your sins, all your iniquities, I'm throwing them into the sea, and they will never be remembered anymore. For someone like me, with such a, a, a bad background, that brings tremendous comfort, comfort and hope. Yeah, that brings tremendous comfort and hope. And I can go on and on. This is just a, just a few, uh, a small amount of scriptures that, that I have that, you know, people would just, I mean, they're, they're so beautiful, they're so powerful, they're so, they're so full of hope and everything. And, um, and also, another one is Lamentations. This was written by the prophet Jeremiah. It's right after the book of Jeremiah in the Old Testament. It's Lamentations chapter 3, verses 21 to 26. Some of the most beautiful verses, passage of scripture, a person can ever read. Uh, this I recall to mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good unto those that wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait 
for the salvation of the Lord. And here we see the same thing that we read in Micah, that, that God is a God of compassion, because it said that in Micah chapter 7. And we read here also that he delights in mercy and that he's, uh, it's good, you know, he's, his compassions never fail. It's good for the soul. And, and God has been good to my soul. God has been good to my soul. So these are scriptures that I use over and over to comfort and encourage myself as well as others because I share my faith with other men in here. And uh, God has given me a whole new life. He's given me a whole new life. There's so much more I wish I could share, uh, but... Uh, what about that last one, uh, you know, the future? What's well, the future of all of your hopes? Okay. You know, what, what's the future about for this? For Thank you. Okay, here's the... Okay, this is something... Uh, you, know, you know, one of the ways I spend my time is I do a lot of writing. I'm a prolific writer. I have a, a typewriter, but even with pen, I, I do a lot of writing. I have an online journal. I uh, write messages for churches, youth groups, things like that. So, and I've been doing that for years. And uh, earlier today, I was thinking about this interview that I was going to do here. And I just put these words together on my typewriter and typed them up right after breakfast this morning, and it's called Going Back in Time. And it, it talks about, really, my, my future hope, desires, and dreams. And uh, I just want to, I'd just like to just read this. I just, because I wrote this just this morning, uh, November 10th, 2015, 8.45 a.m. Going back in time. I wish I could go back to my childhood days. I wish I could begin my life all over again this time wiser and more aware of life and the complexities of life. Reflecting on things, my life has been too complicated. Much of what I experienced in life, even since childhood, has made me sad and weary. But it is all in the past, and now, by the grace of God, it is time to move forward. I know in my heart that good days are here now, and better days are ahead because God is with me. And all my sins and wrongdoings and failings are, as Christians often say, quote, under the blood of Jesus, end quote. Truly, my life is a tale of two cities, a life of pain, torment, guilt, and anguish, yet a life of triumph, hope, and forgiveness. For me, God has made all things go, all things new. For me, God has made all things new. As the populace scripture verse declares, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Psalm 30, verse 5. You know, uh, this is a new season in my life, you know, a time to go, to keep going forward by the grace of God, uh, to thank God for his mercy, to know that it really it's, it's by his mercy and grace that my life did not end prematurely. I could have died when uh, I did a lot of wild things as a kid, you know, jumping through subway cars and running up and down the streets. I was pretty wild, running through rooftops over rooftops, uh, doing things that kids, adventurous kids in the Bronx used to do. And I could have died when the police surrounded me with guns pointed at me from every direction. Uh, one move and, they, and they could have, I could have been blown into eternity. I could have died when another inmate tried to slash my throat. Uh, back in 1979, just, just to make a name for himself. And that was one of my, the best prison experiences I ever had. And um, I, you know, I could have lost my life through sickness, disease, or whatever else, but the Lord kept me alive for a purpose. I got the chance to make peace with Nisa Moskowitz, and for a time we were corresponding, and she wanted to start a whole new thing on forgiveness and healing for the whole nation. It never worked out that way. But God saw the intentions of her heart. I believe he, he recognized that, you know. And uh, so I've had a, a lifetime of experiences, good and bad, horrific and sad, yet, yet some things joyous and, and wonderful. Uh, I'm very active in sharing my faith, uh, in writing spiritual things, and I want to continue to do that, reach this whole nation uh, with the news that Jesus Christ loves people, that he truly has a plan and purpose for their life. He wants them to give him all their sins and he will forgive them of those sins 
and cleanse them and give them a whole new life of redemption and hope. A life that will have a lot of difficulties and challenges because as a Christian, I experience a lot of struggles and day-to-day, you know, testings of my faith and everything, which is normal, but God keeps me on course. And uh, I know my hope is that one day I see the Lord Jesus Christ face to face. I'm gonna look into his eyes and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for saving a wretch like me. You know, and then my message has always been that if he could do it for someone like me, who was one of the chief of sinners, he could do it for anybody who just put their trust in him.